Okay, we will call the meeting to order. This is the um, January 4th meeting of the Yellow Springs Village Council. Uh, Judy, would you please call the roll? Yes, Wintrow? Here. Sims? Here. Housh? Here. McQueen? Here. Hempfling? Here. Also present are Chief of Police Dave Hale, Assistant Village Manager Melissa Van Zandt, and Village Manager Patty Bates. Also the solicitor, Chris Connor. Great. Um, so now we have the fun part of the evening where we uh, swear in our new and returning uh, council members. Um, Mayor Fobert will be doing that for the three council members and then um, Chris Conard will be swearing in the mayor. So should we, why don't, Mayor, why don't you start with council members? Um, it All right. We'll so ask you to, actually, he, he, should, I should be sworn in first, yeah. technically. Except you've I already been sworn in, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. You've already been sworn in. Well, I swore sets. you. We'll do it formally. Yes. yes. Okay. You would raise your right hand. Uh, read after me. I solemnly swear or affirm. I solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution. That I will support the Constitution. And will obey the laws of the United States. And will obey the laws of the United States. And of the state of Ohio. And of the state of Ohio. And that I will in all respects. And that I will in all respects. Observe the provisions of the charter and ordinances of the village of Yellow Springs. Observe the provisions of the charter and the ordinances of the village of Yellow Springs. And you will faithfully start discharge the duties of the office of mayor. And I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of mayor. Congratulations on another term. <laughs> Okay, so why don't we start with Jerry? Would you? I, I mean, I think Jerry should go down the front like okay. we did. You want to do? You want to do it all together, yeah. or would you like to do it individually? Why don't we do it all together? Okay, what the heck? Yeah. We'll ask you all then to to stand if you would. Okay. We stand here? Sure. And if you would uh, raise your right hand. And you guys are are in for four years, so you're not. Uh... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I in your name. I'm Mary Ann McQueen. Jerry Sims. Solemnly swear. Solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution. That, that I, I will support, support the, the Constitution. Constitution. And will obey the laws of the United States. And, and will obey, obey the, the laws, laws of the United, United States, States and the state of Ohio. And the state of Ohio. That I will in all respects. That I will, I will in all respects. Observe the provisions of the charter. Observe the provisions of the charter. And ordinances of the village of Yellow Springs. And ordinances of the village of Yellow Springs. And I will faithfully discharge. And I will faithfully discharge. The duties of the office of council member. The the duties duties of the office of the council member. Congratulations. Jerry. All right. Signed, sealed, and delivered. Sounds good. All right. Thank you. Uh, announcements? I have a few. Um, so, first of all, I thought it would just be good to remind folks that our second meeting of the month is going to be on Tuesday the 19th because January 18th is Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Um, I also, Patty, do you want to talk about the Christmas tree pickup since? Uh, yes, I yeah. can do that. Okay. Uh, you're going to do that later? I, I'll do it when you get done. I have a couple okay. of other things. And then you're going to say something about coffee with a I cop? Am. Okay, yes. good. And then the other thing I wanted to mention is that on um, January 17th, uh, the Yellow Springs Resilience Network, in collaboration with the Zero Waste Group, is going to be doing uh, a free showing of the film Wasteland. And this is part of their uh, six-part series that is related to climate action uh, planning, uh, which is something that the Environmental Commission, one of our own commissions, is also collaborating on. 
So that's a free showing at the Little Art, and that's uh, Sunday the 17th at 1 p.m. Okay, thank you, Patty. Um, the Christmas tree pickup that Brian talked about, um, if you have a live, had a live tree and you would like to have it recycled um, by the village in cooperation with the Boy Scouts, please put it out to your curb by Saturday the 9th. They will pick up on the 9th and that will be the only day they're going to pick up. So if you don't have it out by that day, it will not be picked up and recycled. Um, the next Coffee with a Cop is tentatively scheduled for the 20th of this month, which I think is a Wednesday. Um, we hope to do it from 7 in the morning until 8.30 in the morning to try to give a different um, you know, a crowd of folks a, an opportunity to meet some of the officers. That is tentative. I do have to confirm that with the three coffee houses yet that that's a good date for them. But I will have, a, once we confirm it, we'll put up some flyers and I will have it at the next meeting as well as an annou for announcement. And um, the only other thing I have is that council needs to please look at your calendars for a good Friday in February to have the second annual uh, chili soup cook-off for the employees because council graciously uh, last year were our judges and we are asking you to do that again. So uh, we hope to have it on a Friday in, Jan in February. Sounds delicious. Okay. <laughs> uh, any other announcements? Okay. Um, next, move on to the, <coughs> to the consent agenda. Uh, the minutes of December 21st, uh, 2015 regular meeting. A motion to ad adopt. So moved. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Hi. Hi. I have a question. Oh. Mm -hmm. Were there changes made from the minutes that we received? Because there were typos and that's all. Yeah. Cool. Okay. And one thing that was filled in was <clears throat> the reason for our executive session. So that was one thing that um, in the ones that were uh, in the packet that had not been filled in. So. Okay. So did we all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Um, it appears I didn't notice that there were really any petitions and communications from citizens at our table, Judy. Okay, so there are no uh, petitions and communications review of the agenda. Um, is there anything that we want to add or change? Well, I have a question. Um, the minutes from our last meeting said that there'd be a resolution supporting the solar project. And I just wanted to check about that. I, that. That is probably my fault, Marianne, because I went on vacation. So I so will we'll make sure that gets that in the next packet. Next. Okay. Um, okay. So we're moving on to a review of the agenda. Um, anything that needs to be added or changed, I just want to note that there is an executive session. Um, the only thing I would suggest we do is before we go into executive session that we'll review future agenda items um, and set, set the agenda for the next meeting. Anything else? Okay. So now we're moving on to nominations for president and vice president of council. Um, open the floor for nominations. Uh which Jerry, were you going to say something? Well, I just had a question because it says, are we going to do them both together or separately? Uh, Robert's rule says we do them separately. Gotcha. President and then vice president. Okay. Um, so I would like I'm, to. Oh, go ahead. I was going to nominate Karen Wintrow for president. I'll second that. I move the nominations be closed. Any other comment? Um, should, can we just do a roll call? How should we do that? Vote. Just may have to second Jerry's motion. Oh, oh. did you second? Se the I'll, I'll second close Jerry's to motion. Close. Okay. <clears throat> Counselor. Yes. McQueen. Yes. Houch. Yes. Sims. Yes. Wintra. Yes. Thank you. I guess I'm allowed to vote. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> sure. You are allowed to vote for yourself. Yes, you are. <laughs> Uh, nominations for Vice President of Council. I'd like to say something. Um, both uh, Brian and I are, have expressed, well, we, we talked to each other. We're both interested in being Vice President. 
and I'm not sure how to proceed with that. And I guess I would just say a little bit more. I think that it, I shouldn't speak for Brian, but I, I would say that it's not, I'm, I think that I'm probably going to have four years and I don't imagine that I would run again. And um, I would like to, at some point, uh, if it would work out, be president of council. So, and I feel like I have something to offer. So that's why I want to do that. And how we proceed from here, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> do you have any, nom any nominations? Uh, I nominate Brian House. I'll second. Well, I'll nominate myself. <laughs> and I'll second. <laughs> okay. Um, I, you know, I don't, I don't know if we... Why don't people uh, make some discussion? Well, I'd like to hear a little bit from the candidates. Okay. Uh, did you want to say anything else, Marianne? Um, well, as I said, I think I'll, pro I'll serve four years. Hopefully I'll serve four years. And I doubt that I would run for council after that. Um, I've had very broad experience uh, being board president of a number of boards. And, um, you know, I know the village well. I feel like, uh, I believe that I uh, have something to add to being uh, in the role of uh, leading council. So that that's why I would like to do this. Uh, I think some of my reasons aren't that different. Um, I've led a lot of boards, I've run a lot of meetings, and I think that uh, it's important that we have some continuity. Uh, if uh, the president of council is not here, and I feel confident in that role, um, I've never missed a council meeting since I've been on council. I think that's relevant. Uh, but I also uh, appreciate what Marianne has to offer. Um, I think that uh, it's you know it's something for me that uh, I feel confident in the role, and um, it may also be something that uh, if if I run again for council, that I would be interested in uh, moving on to a president role as well. So, Chris, how do we how do we do this vote? Well, you need to close nominations first. So I will move that the nominations be closed. I'll second it. So, but do, do I? Do you can actually say a name by name, yeah. so that you don't have to go through two. two things. Yeah. And so, is, okay. You you some flexibility there, so you could do it either way. Okay. So let's start with Judith. Uh, I'm voting for Marianne. I'll vote for myself. <laughs> Yay. Uh, and I'm voting for myself. Uh, Brian House. I'll vote for Brian also. Congratulations. <laughs> um, I guess, should we move seats? So I guess just these two need to switch. So we have two pieces of legislation. Uh, first is Resolution 2016-01. Um, I think both of these you can read in just by title only, Judy. Yes. This is approving dues for membership in the Ohio Municipal League. Can I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Um, Patty, would you just review briefly the, the amount and the purpose? Right. The amount for um, the village dues in the Ohio Municipal League are $690. Um, and that actually says for 2015, but I believe it's the 16 dues that we're talking about here. Um, and the Ohio Municipal League is a league of villages and cities that represents our interest um, statewide, but particularly in Columbus on a lot of, of legislative issues that affect villages and cities only <clears throat> don't affect other townships and other uh, subdivisions of government. Great, thank you. Um, any comments or questions? 
All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, next, 2016-02. Um, and it is, it is misrepresented on the copy you have in front of you, but correctly on the copy to be signed. This is enacting a contract with the clerk of council for 2016 through 2018. Can I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Um, at the last meeting, this was actually on our uh, agenda for the last meeting, but we took it off because uh, Chris Connard suggested that we um, have a three-year contract for Judy, so we didn't need to update the contract every year, and we agreed to that. I think that actually developing that contract is still in process. Um, what the, the legislation says is that we'll be um, the employment agreement uh, drafted by the solicitor in consultation with the president of council. Um, we did have a review of Judy at the last meeting, at the December 20th meeting. It was very positive, and uh, Council expressed very positive um, input on Judy's performance, as did um, some staff members and, and the, the solicitor, who she works with quite closely. So we're very pleased with Judy and uh, are happy to have her continue um, in her role for the next three years. Uh, all those, uh, any comments or questions? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, now is the time in the agenda where we hear from citizens uh, about items that are not on the agenda. Uh, we ask that you um, come up to the podium and state your name. Um, I see that we do have one person, Quincy Isinger. Essinger. Um, you're on the list first, mm -hmm. so come on up, please. Hello, I'm Quincy Essinger. I'm a recent addition to town. Um, I haven't had the privilege of meeting many of you. So nice to meet you all ahead of time. Um, I forgive, please forgive me for my informal attire. I could only make it very quickly after work here to the meeting. Um, I didn't have the chance to directly prepare anything, um, but I'm hoping to just quickly discuss um, the water appearing at my residence here in town. Um, I have a few things that I can show um, the council if they're interested with things. Um, and I would like to uh, float the idea for council discussion that there be a refund for citizens um, for um, such water occurrences when the water is, in my opinion, unusable. Um, it happens at a rate of at least once every two weeks to once every week at my residence. I've discussed this with um, city utilities and have found that little to nothing can be done until approximately 2018 when um, essentially the problem will fix itself. Um, so if you don't mind, I'll turn around quickly and show you. Could that. I ask where do you live at? Um, I live on Herman on Street. Herman Street? Yes, near the, near the uh, campus. Because we haven't had any other complaints from folks down in that area about the water. What type of problem is it exactly? That yeah, why don't... Um, I do have the benefit of dates um, and of photos as mm -hmm. well. Um, these are... Let me check which one's which of things. Um, these are two samples from dates when the water gets pretty excessively cruddy, as I like to... Um, call it, they have particulated to the bottom with things. I've been told it's magnesium and through some checks. Mm -hmm. Manganese Disney. probably. Manganese, yes. yeah. um, so when it comes through the pipes, uh, this is one of the better samples of things, but as you can kind of tell, this is how it comes through. Um, and the ways to resolve that are either to not use water for approximately one to two days. Um, or to use this water along with everything that comes with it for things, um, drinking, washing, all of the normal household mm -hmm. things. Um, this other one has been um, an older sample of things, and I don't quite know all of my chemistry up to teaching par, but I've got a little bit. Um, You can see that in sitting in the bottle, it has actually started to warp the nature of the bottle, so it's now tilting. Um, so it starts to make me wonder about the 
safety of the water coming through my pipes? Well, first let me assure you that the water is safe to drink. I mean, I, under, I understand your concerns and, and that it doesn't look particularly appetizing, but um, the water is safe to drink. Otherwise, you know, we wouldn't be putting it out there. That's the first thing. Like I said, we haven't, I haven't had any other complaints. Have you had any other complaints in your office? So I, I guess I'm trying to figure out where the problem lies exactly. And normally the first thing that we recommend, who did you talk to? Did you talk to Johnny? Mm -hmm. Yes, I've spoken okay. to him um, directly and he said that little to nothing can be done. Right, normally what, what we suggest is that you try a, a, a whole house filter. Um, I know that I, I don't have any problems at my house. I live on the other end of town and I don't have any problems here and I drink this water consistently out of the tap. Um, so it's just difficult to try to figure out where the problem would lie for, for your house. Um, is there any way that you can try a whole house filter? I mean, they're relatively inexpensive. Um, that's not exactly at my discretion. I rent my current location, okay. so I also have to have permission there. Okay. Plus, I don't know who would foot the cost for that. Okay. Um, but it seems like yet another step in a chain to well, the, filter there, water, which... There, there is manganese and, and iron in our water. And, and neither are harmful. Neither are harmful. I know, again, I know that it doesn't look particularly appetizing but neither are harmful. Um, and we do have exceptionally hard water here. And those are all things that we are hoping to fix when the new plant goes online. But again, that will be probably sometime in late 2017. So, you know, in the meantime, I'm not sure exactly what to, to offer you in, in way of a remedy, um, you know, as far as your clothes and, and, you know, potential damage to the clothes, we do have a thing called, it's called red out. We provide it for free out of the office. You can always put that in with your laundry to keep it from discoloring it. Um, but I, I'm just kind of at a loss to, to be able to give you a remedy that I know is gonna work because on our end of it, I mean, no one else has reported having a similar problem, so. Um, I, I'm aware it's a, a spotty issue for yeah. things. Um, I mean, normally everybody has it when we flush the pipes, when we flush the water lines. And when did we do that last? Um, we didn't do it. We did, did we do it in October? Yeah, it's been a while. After, okay. after we finished the, the loop completion. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we'll do it again probably around April is normally when we try to do it. Uh, you know, it's just difficult for me to offer you a solution when it seems that you're the only one that is affected. Well, Maybe you could talk to your landlord and just see if there's something they can do to help you out in the meantime, as far as maybe putting a whole house filter in or something like that. I just wanted the opportunity to express the frustration that I'm right. both yeah. paying for the water coming in, mm -hmm. paying for the water going out when it's um, while deemed safe for things, um, I, I think if many people, you know, were given that bottle, they would not drink that. Um, so I'm, I'm getting it. But I'm getting it from every direction. Have you talked to any of your neighbors? Do you know whether it's occurring in other houses in your neighborhood? Um, they get it from time to time. As frequently as you are. I mean, that's I'm not sure if it's as frequently as myself, um, but I know some others nearby as well. You know, our, our, the water is tested, and, and I, you know, I understand it's, it. The color is, is um, definitely not appealing, and and you know, whether it's deemed safe or not, it, you know, you you might question that. But I just want to be clear, as Patty said, that our water is tested frequently. Do they test it daily, daily. at the plant? So so as far as there being any health problems with the water, any any problems beyond there being. A mineral in the water that doesn't look nice there isn't anything harmful in our water and um, so you know I I wish there I, I agree with Marianne you know it seems like you know is this a something that's happening a pipe in your in your neighborhood or right. that's you know what, I was wondering what can was be done in your own line I mean there there's that. no question that it seems to be geographic I you know I hear I hear some people I've never had brown water at our other house on Xenia Avenue, right. nor at our house here. I, we've never had brown water. Melissa. I never see brown water at the train station. It, it, so it does seem to be geographic. Mm -hmm. 
um, as to how it happens. And I don't know if it's the age of the lines. I don't know if it's the slope of the lines. Well, and one thing to keep in mind, although this, again, would make it a little bit more widespread than just you individually, is that you're kind of in between the two water projects <laughs> that, that we did in oh, yeah, that's 2015. True. Mm -hmm. you, you're, we worked on Livermore, and we worked on Xenia. Um, although, again, you shouldn't be the only person affected by that if that were part of the cause. I might so. just be the current. I might just be the only person currently with the right. frustration of right. Right. Um, getting my utility bill and realizing that, oftentimes, to clear this out of my pipes, I'm leaving a faucet running for a majority of the day, mm -hmm. and then later I'm realizing I'm paying for it coming, and paying for it mm -hmm. leaving. Whereas if this were any other product at any other store, it would be returned. Mm -hmm. um, well. I I was going to say, I mean, uh, you know, we represent the citizens of the village, and the citizens um, have been talking with us about a new water plant, as you probably know. But um, this has been an issue villagers have dealt with for many years, and have made the decision that uh, at this point we're going to get it. We're going to get a new water plant that's going to help with the manganese. But in the meantime, uh, it's a kind of something that citizens have dealt with and have been okay with. It's it's our public utility. It's we're not a private corporation or something right. like that. Yeah. So um, the other possibility is that there's something within the house that's uh, you know causing a problem. Uh, just a, just a thought. If nobody else in the neighborhood's having a problem, then it seems like uh, you know there could be something you know pipe within the the house don't um, know within regards to that i've done um the assorted checks to rule out whether it's um, something because uh it is a slightly varying basis of that so anything that would be approximately one week to two weeks i've sort of done the rule outs well yeah for. well what normally happens is because the water here is so incredibly hard it causes scaling on the inside of the pipes and the scaling will periodically break off and that's what you're seeing when you see those little flakes. It's actually not coming directly from the plant. It's some, something that's scaled along the pipe, and then it's, it's broken off um, over time. So that, that's kind of what makes me think it may be something to do with the, the age of the pipes in your house with a little bit of excessive scaling that you can't see because it's on the inside. And so. is there a water softener in your apartment? Um, there, there's currently not. Okay. Because most residents have used water softeners as a way to sort of balance this issue. Right. Well, so. yeah, although that I, doesn't deal with the right, manganese, you right. need the whole house yeah. filter for that. It, yeah, and I, I don't have either one. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, I live on the south end of town, and, and I don't have a problem. And right. So, I mean, I, I just am kind of at a loss to offer you a remedy is my problem. So um, I will think about it. I've written your name down and that you live on Herman, so I, you know, if I come up with something, I can definitely get in touch with you easily enough so okay. um, as a quick side thing is it possible to obtain um, a copy of the utility rates for the last quarter of 2015 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we can certainly get that to you okay um, Melissa, been... Melissa, would you, <coughs> Melissa yeah. will take if care you of getting give me your email address um, just slide it to me then I can send it to you I had it up on the website until uh, Friday or Thursday of last week so I can send it to you okay Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Esther. Thanks. Any other citizen concerns? Okay. Um, we have no special reports. We don't have any old business. Um, new business, we have board and commission assignments. Um, Judy had um, that list in the packet of um, current, and, and this is up to date as far as you know. Yes. And this it is up to date. Oh, the one that was in the packet wasn't. So there is one on yeah, this the is table, Brian, folks. Brian, to Brian updated a lot of these, and I okay. added them to this. And what is on at your place right now? Just Brian, do you want to read that one? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, you know, there are a few that you can see, uh, Board of Zoning Appeals that doesn't have a council rep. Um, this Board of Tax Appeals, oh, I get John Hart 
re-upped on that one until the, the 2016. Um, some of these don't have um, don't have council reps. Most of them do. Um, and but don't we don't we re look at those? Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. So we'll and look. I mean, let's just we just start at the top um, planning commission. But m for most of them, we will have um, an alternate of uh, uh, the representative and then an alternate um, for each one. So um, we're going to go through one by one. Yeah. I mean, let's start with planning commission. Um, Jerry, you are you were the alternate. You took on the role of rep for the last couple of meetings, at least the last right. meeting and several other meetings. Um, and I'd, I'd like to stay, stay the council rep on planning. And how, any other, any, anybody else interested? What's the feeling about that? I mean, is I'm interested in being the alternate. I don't know if you're asking that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a question. Um, I know we have uh, alternates, citizens who are alternates. Do they automatically go into the position, or no. do, don't we vote on them each time? Exactly. Okay, because yeah. the way this looks, I had understood Tim just, Tim Toby had just stepped down. Right. Or, I mean, so. That, you know, I, I believe that with Planning Commission Board of Zoning Appeals, the reason that the alternate position was created for those was so that someone could be trained and prepped to be able to step in. So for those, there's not, they're they asked if they are willing to step in, and if they're willing to step in, they're moved in. The other boards and commissions, the alternate position is a little different in nature, and, and I'm, not, I'm not positive how that Well, for the goes. for the new ordinances, we were explicit that an alternate, you know, can, when the, a permanent position opens up, that they can uh, vie for that, but we still approve them. Um, okay, so it's I not an automatic. It's not yeah. automatic, okay. right? That's, that's um, what I thought. I just had. To and I think and, I think and, that should be the practice mm -hmm. for planning commission and BZA as okay. well. Um, I'd have to look at the ordinance, but I know for the new ones, we we were clear about that. Right. Although I I do have to agree with Judy that both of those take quite a bit of training as far as understanding the zoning code. So. And there's there's also issues of having, especially on BZA, of having um, quorums. And so typically, there are quite frequently the alternates are the voting. And that's the other that's the thing about planning commission and BZA both is that is that they are um, judicial, legislative, and judicial. So there are votes that um, you know the votes are meaningful like it's not just something that's going to come to council they make decisions that are independent of council right. um, and I think that's why we want alternates because we want to always be able to have a quorum um, Chris do you have is there anything legally here that you not, not per se I mean it's really up to you okay. how you want to manage the operation of that board of commissions I think it makes sense for planning and DCA because in the short time where I've gone to the planning commission on occasion, there's been issues with quorums. And so there's that alternate member of council with Lori and then, then Jerry. And I think having someone in training that, that model is a good idea and, and good practice. So Adam was the alternate. Is that yeah, right. Yeah. Right. And, and the, the alternate uh, citizen, and he, he has stepped in on a couple of occasions because we didn't have a quorum. So are we saying we are? going to have we are going to go through a step of officially appointing him are we agreeing I, on that? I feel like we should I agree yeah. with I, uh, Brian that I, I I mean I think I I would be very happy to see Adam step into that position right. it's not about that right. and it's not about the fact that these alternates are in, in training that was part of the idea of, of putting the alternates there but I could foresee a situation where an alternate for whatever reasons hasn't been able to participate effectively mm -hmm. in which case council you know, we might want to reconsider at that point, um, or they might want to. They may not want it, you know, too. But I think it should be council should be involved mm -hmm. in that mm -hmm. decision. I I can see that. I it seems a little ironic since since both of these folks are, have already voted on a regular basis okay. on to on decisions. It seems like a little bit of a revisiting, but. Um, because we need to uh, assign some other alternates. When right. That so we'll need. Also, and that so kind of brings that 
that to the fore also when those right. people are moving in that you know it comes to council mm -hmm. you know that recommendation and then then we start looking for that alter another alternate so which we need to do so do we want right. to should we have a formal I, I don't want to get kind of that mixed up into um, making these determinations um, but I guess so there would still be a question about Adam that maybe we should we should have a formal vote on Adam yeah. no I did speak with Adam mm -hmm. and to make sure that he was uh, still interested in being on planning and he, mm -hmm. he said okay. yes so he, sure. he kind of assumed that he was would right. move up to the okay. well, prime position. I, I, would, I would make the suggestion that once we get through the then we go back and yeah. yeah that we go back and just someone can make the motion and okay. second and approve Adam tonight okay. 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 and uh -huh. that way that that's taken care of yep and, and also uh, Judy is putting something in the paper about our commission needs yeah yes so maybe we should put in the paper needing an alternate for Mm -hmm. did, did we have two alternates or did we always just have one we can have two up but to I, two but up I think planning two. did only have one I think they did only have one they had uh, four plus council member plus an alternate because the council member sat regularly and voted I don't think they had two alternates on planning I'm pretty sure that the charter says we can have two though it, right so, yeah. I'm just saying right. I don't think they did right Okay, so the Board of Tax Appeals, um, I don't think that there is, there is not a council rep on that one. Um, so we'll go down to Environmental Commission. Um, Marianne, yeah, um, you've um, been serving quite I ably would, there. I would like to uh, be on that commission for another year. We have um, some two pretty important projects we're working on, Okay, uh, the wellhead. Uh, and and the glass farm okay wetlands and I'd like to continue um, and I don't I think Brian had been the alternate or was Lori the alternate? I think Lori was the I, alternate. I'm the alternate for energy board yeah oh, yeah oh, I okay. think Lori was the okay, alternate so we need to have someone It'd be good to have an alternate yeah alternate. so who would like to be the alternate for the environmental commission if no one else right? Okay. So Jerry. <coughs> okay. And did you folks approve Judith for the alternate, or for the alternate? Oh, are yeah. we voting Council on these things? Or <laughs> I, I don't think we need to vote. Okay. I, yeah. yeah. That sounds great. It, it um, seemed congenial, but I would. Yeah. You'd actually. Yeah. I would yeah, yeah no. Too, if we were um, community access panel um, that had been. Um, Brian, why is there O oh, and NA? Because it's, that's the terms. Right. Um, and Jerry had been the alternate. Um, any interest in, um, are you wanting to continue, Brian, or is that? I, I am open if there's someone else that's interested um, in the community access panel. Um, but I, I'm happy to be there as well, so. And I'd stay as alternate if, unless someone else wants to. You, get to know them. you do have a couple of issues like the broadband initiative and that, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So whoever, if someone else did come in, they would have to be aware of those. Yeah, I think that's the that's probably the the biggest piece that CAP is working on right now is the municipal broadband. So any uh, any, I mean, I guess I would I would probably look at at you know Judith, are you do you have any interest in either in in community access? Um, I was looking at the library commission. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I work some evenings, so I have to kind of watch my, mm, my okay. evening schedule as well as. And they they, they only meet every other month. So. Yeah. So Jerry, you we'll, we'll have Judith as the council rep for the library commission. Would you like to be primary? Say again. Would you like to be primary? I can do either. Okay. Whatever. Well, why don't we flip flop it? Let, and then you'll take let, alternate. Let, Judith be the primary and I'll be the alternate. Okay. okay. HRC, um, Mary Ann and Brian has been the alternate. Actually, Lori was the alternate. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, because Brian um, stepped down at the retreat. So, Mary Ann, is that? Um, um, I would uh, be happy to continue being the rep for HRC. 
And what about alternate? Brian, do you want to keep? What? Well, Lori had stepped into the alternate oh, you, position. So, um, I mean, I, I'm open if somebody else is interested in that placement. Um, and if not, I'm happy to do it. Um, Arts and Culture Commission. Um, Brian is the council, currently the council rep. I'm the alternate. Any, um, Brian, are you interested in continuing? Is anybody else interested in it? I'm, uh, I'm open to somebody uh, taking that spot, but not opposed to staying. <laughs> I'm, and Do I'm it. fine with being the <laughs> alternate unless somebody else wants it. Okay. Anybody else? Nope. Okay. Okay. Keep those as they are. Energy board. Um, we have Mary Ann as the as the rep, and Brian is the alternate. Um, um, I would be willing to stay. I also would be willing to let someone else um, have a shot at it. But w if I if I I, one thing that's not on here, which I would be interested in, is the mediation program. Uh, and Jerry, I think you're the rep. Is that right? <laughs> um, so I was thinking if I were to do the mediation program, then maybe not do the energy board. And the reason I'm interested in the mediation program is because I'd really like to have the mediation program get more involved in some public processes that I anticipate we will be doing this year. So. Now, I, they, they aren't a formal... Uh, no, they're not a... They're yeah, sort of so quasi... It, yeah, so it'd be... Because yeah. they would have the a choice to say yeah or nay. Well, they would, but they get money from the village government, so... No, they're just... As well, the director, I know. Yeah. You know, but the rest, rest of the members are going. Yeah, right, right. But still, in terms of the energy board, I'm happy to be the council rep for that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Marianne, would you like to be the alternate? Yeah, sure. I'll be the alternate. But uh, I, you know, if you'd like to be the alternate, I'm going to stay with the alternate for that. I've been okay. taking the training to uh -huh. eventually become a mediator once, oh, great. once I'm no longer on council. Uh -huh. so. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Um, Economic Sustainability Commission, Brian um, has been the rep. Uh, myself, I've been the alternate, and I'm interested in continuing, Brian? Certainly interested in continuing because we're just getting started. So. I mean, this is one commission that, that I'm committed to, so. Anything? I was going to offer to be the alternate, but if, if you want to keep it. Oh, yeah. you could, um. You'll probably be there anyway, right? Well, but I, we couldn't do that because we couldn't have three people. We couldn't It's a public meeting, isn't it? Well, that's true. That's true. I'm, no, I was just thinking for the chamber. Yeah. But, but if you think it makes, I haven't been involved in the last two years, so I'm happy to go with whatever the... Well, why don't... Um, I mean, I could... I guess you're right. It is a public meeting, so I could certainly come to the... come to the meetings, um, even if you were. So why don't we... why don't we just put you down as the alternate... On um, economic... Economic sustainability. <clears throat> Uh, and utility dispute resolution board doesn't have a council member, do they? No, because it's the makeup is specific by ordinance. Okay. Okay, so it looks like we were. Did you get all that, Judy? I did. Okay, perfect. Um, sounds good. Um, we have uh, next. We have council rules. Um, before we're, we do that, we need me. to vote on these Yeah, where are we going to go back to Adam? Over. Oh, no. vote for Adam, yes. Um, somebody want to make a motion uh, to... I move that Adam be made primary, primary member of the uh, planning board. 
Planning Commission. I second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 And so I assume you you're might want to be, Judy, looking for an alternate. Yeah, I've got for, that actually written on okay. paper. So. <coughs> okay. Um, next, uh, council rules review and something that um, I don't believe was in our packet but was at our table is the website and social media policy that um, I know Brian has been working on that um, uh, we I don't know if we can really look at it and make a decision tonight, but we can look at that a little bit later. Um, and again, I don't know if anybody's, if we're prepared to finalize the council rules, but it's always something we do with the new council. Karen, has it changed in the last couple of years? Do you know? I don't know. Well, January 6, 2014 is the last, is the last, so that would have been I guess that would have been the year you were off council. You went off council. So it was new with Marianne and Brian. I think a main thing that changed was we did add the three minute um, time limit per, um, and I think that was really the only major change. For public comment. Right, for public comment. <coughs> you know, I think, you know, something that we were, that we had been <laughs> doing for, um, Part of last year, I think we started doing it after the retreat. We agreed to try it at the retreat was to do, have the second meeting of the month be a work session and where we would not hear legislation. It would be um, when, when there's a work session, we can't um, officially take votes. Um, the last quarter, I'd say, of the, of the year, that became pretty problematic because we had a lot of legislation we kept having to schedule special meetings before um, the council meetings and it was becoming very complicated so while I like the structure of a work session and I think that there are probably topics that we should do that with and we can even do it as a part of a regular meeting I'm not sure I'm ready I don't I'm not sure I think that's something we should be adopting I I'm I think our meetings are informal enough and conversational enough that we can achieve a lot of what we're trying to do in all regular meetings. Marianne, how do you feel about it? I haven't thought about it. I think, you know, one of our main goals with work sessions was that we thought it would uh, make things uh, more efficient. Um, I'm not sure that it's changed the amount of time that we spend mm -mm. Um, on issues. Um, but I do wonder if in this part where we describe the different types of meetings, if we should include that, you know, because we've got special meetings, we've got emergency meetings, and it doesn't mean that we have to, you know, say have we're going to yeah. always have them, but just explaining what a work session is seems appropriate for this document. And then maybe we do it ad hoc. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was certainly a good idea to do a work session um, with uh, some of the policing issues. Uh, sidewalks um, was probably a good one. So there do seem to be times when right. it makes yeah. sense. But you're saying to, rather than having every other meeting be a work meeting, we would. It's an option. So, it's you know, we kind of like a special meeting. Or so at we, that point, I would think we, we could call it a special meeting. But, but I, I, I agree with you. We can have it in there as a, as a defined element of mm -hmm. our meeting just so it, it and it doesn't mean we have to have them. Right. It's just there as an, uh, right. an option if you choose to exercise it. So yeah, I, I, I guess I think the main thing is that we, when we have a topic that needs some time for thought, and discussion that we take the time to do that right and, and I think we, we call it. right I agree I think I think what would be good is if the, the big distinction and the big issue for me was we might have one piece of legislation and it became very difficult to to do agenda planning for ordinances that have two votes where you know if we didn't have if we had a meeting where we couldn't take a formal vote we'd have to wait another month to vote on an ordinance so it became problematic so many times so my feeling is when we have these meeting topics we can set aside a meeting or, or not have new business and old business but we'll have legislation um, and get that out of the way and then go into a topic just so that we and if we don't have legislation then we don't have legislation or if we don't need to have legislation we can put it off 
you know, those are the kinds of things we can do at agenda planning. Um, I, I never saw it as a problem before, you know, I was, I heard you were doing the work session and I was mm -hmm. curious sort of what problem you were trying to solve there, although we sometimes had long meetings and because we did make time, I thought, uh, then for these longer conversations. So um, it seems to depend on what kind of things are on the agenda. Um, sometimes those weightier discussions do take time, but anyway, I like the idea of, um, you know, maybe uh, doing what you're suggesting is that there be able to be legislation at every meeting because I could see where it could very much delay mm -hmm. legislative processes. Yeah, I think uh, so. The efficiency thing, just to flesh that out, um, when this was brought to us as, as an option that other councils use, I think it was the idea that you know we could lay out all the issues rather than parse it out over a long period of time. Mm -hmm. um, but the other thing that was compelling to me was trying to be less formal. And, and I guess that's why mm -hmm. I did like, I know not everybody liked using rooms A and B, but that's part of what I liked about it as well. Um, so, um, but those were the reasons that we tried it out. Right. And I think, you know, interestingly enough, in a lot of communities, a lot of councils actually use work sessions as intense sessions between council and staff, mm -hmm. we typically didn't do that. Right. We typically use it in, as an intense session between council and the community. So, and we, you know, we're a council that always takes public input. And, you know, that just doesn't happen very often um, in a lot of communities. Um, they're very limited about when and how they take public input. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that, um, and I think we, for some of the work sessions we did, it was hearing from staff. You know, we got a couple of presentations from John on sidewalks. We got one on economic development. We got one on um, energy and, and so I think that it's worked, but I think if we just structure it so that we have a, uh, at least allow for legislation at every meeting, um, then I think we'll be fine. And I, you know, I, I looked through this briefly, and it, it seemed um, it seemed good to me. I don't know that we're ready to to vote on it because if we go ahead and write something up, I don't know if we need to vote on it tonight, and um, you know how we want to integrate the the website and social media policy. As I said, I haven't had any time to look at mm -hmm. it. Well, I just had a few small things about uh, the rules and procedures that you know we can talk more about now or later. Um, one of them was, uh, I guess, just in terms of the list of order of business, mm -hmm. that um, review of minutes, I think, has changed to consent agenda. So that's just a small detail. Um, and also, we should probably add assistant manager's report. And, and then one thing I thought we should think about is there's this seven minute recess and I just wondered you know do we actually want to commit to seven minutes or do we want to be more flexible and just say a short break um, but that was just something that popped out at me and I'm sure we have not kept to seven minutes when we've taken breaks right sure we haven't. <laughs> I think probably the reason that was picked that it's more than five minutes and we don't just say 10 that's going to turn into 15. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I think it's probably okay. I mean, unless anybody else objects. I, I, I'm cool with it. You know, the other thing I'm thinking with the reports, the staff reports, is that maybe they should all be lumped under mm -hmm. staff reports. Yeah, because there could essentially be something else if there's a, you know, something special going on. And I have Johnny or Jason or Brad. Right. Um, um, and then the other thing is I just wanted to make sure when we do finalize this that it's easy for citizens to find the five attachments that are referred to. Once it's online, you mean? Yeah. Yes, at one time these links actually worked, and I think in the intervening years they now do not. So I'll just make sure those are cool. good links. Oh, good, yeah. Um, one thing um, the meeting agenda, 
um, I wondered if it's ever, I think it's done electronically, but maybe just not on paper, that it that there's a, um, uh, a, a table of contents in, ter in terms of what documents are included in the packet. Is that done? I, I think they generally, don't you put them in the order that they're listed on the agenda? I mean, that's really, the agenda ends up being the table of contents. How is it searched on, online? Could it be searched? You just can bookmark to that topic and then there those documents are. So if you, if you bookmark to uh, old business on tonight's agenda, then you get all of the documents that we're looking at right now. I guess I wondered because sometimes under that, uh, say boards and commissions, say there's three documents. You know, I wondered if it would be maybe it's not a problem. I don't remember. It's just something that sort of came to my mind when I was looking at this uh, packet. Is to be sure you've got all your items. Um, if it made sense to actually list the items that came under that topic. Mm -hmm. Just throw it out there. So I was yeah. feeling about it. But. I've been thinking about that too. I mean, because sometimes part of the issue is though that that I know things can some things to aren't always minute, well, so. and they aren't always included in in the paper packet. Things like um, oh, I mean, I just actually talked to Judy about the what it was about a fifty or seventy-five page financial document that we're going to get once a month. Mm -hmm. yeah. That that except for you, maybe you, Judith, um, wouldn't need to be given in paper form mm -hmm. to anybody um, and, unless that's they want it. That's coming from our finance. Right, mm -hmm. from the finance. It's, that's a new thing that we're doing now is once a month we're um, getting those financials. Um, but there are items that uh, Judy doesn't put in the, in the paper packet. Um, okay. And you may want to, you know, that could be an individual thing. I don't know if you two because you are going to be getting a strictly paper packet. Uh, I don't know. I haven't thought about it. Okay. <laughs> I thought, oh, good, I'm still getting paper. <laughs> That's what I thought when I got it. But um, well, this one was only 24 pages. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I mean, that's that's something you two can kind of maybe manage together. But ideally, the electronic packet will be the most complete. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And I guess since we're talking about it. Judy, are we planning to move to the agenda builder at some point with the website? We, I guess we can. It has not been helpful. I didn't okay. find that it was helpful. When talking to them about how to structure it, they, in fact, were sort of going, oh, well, if what you want to do is this, then this isn't really your best solution. Hmm. So it, I just sort of went the other direction and, and did it this way. Okay. Uh, well, maybe I'll pilot it with some of the commissions. Um, but that, Judith, and I, I'm not sure if all council members remember this piece, but uh, what it allows you to do is link the documents to the topic so it would serve as that list. You know, so basically if we were talking about sidewalks, then you can link the documents about sidewalks to that. Mm -hmm. So, Right. And, and I do think that if there are um, minutes or reports from commissions, that that should be under the commission report not under petitions and communications. So, I mean, sometimes I think things have ended up in petitions and communications that probably belong actually as part of the actual discussion. Um, I know something I've started doing in my own board packets is if there is an attachment, I will say attachment. I will, so I'll have the, the agenda topic and I'll put in parentheses attachment. So they know they're uh, attached or something like that, so that so that the people looking at the packet know that there is supposed to be something attached. So, you know, that might be something we can talk about when we're at agenda planning is how to go about integrating that. And I think it's it's different in paper than it is online, a little bit. You have a little bit more flexibility online. Yeah, yeah, and you know, Brian, I, I'm happy to. Do better with the in person. Somebody going, oh no no, click that and try this, than the over the phone. Yeah. People in Indianapolis. So if you want to. Yeah, that's something because I've been right. wanting to launch that. So mm -hmm. I'll, I'll I'll try to I'll get it going and then time. yeah, cool. And we'll see if it'll work. So let's let's just plan on since we're we haven't had a chance to look at the website and social media policy and there's some 
things that we're kind of adding and, and talking about. Let's plan on just bringing this, the rules review to the next meeting. Is that, does that sound good? Yep. yep. Okay. Um, the goals process discussion. Um, I just asked Judy to put the, the document that we had created and, and used for 2015 into the, into the packet, not intending that we're going to talk about goals tonight, just to kind of um, bring Judith up to speed on, on um, how, we, how we did goals last year. And um, I think we, maybe we've done this for the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. And um, to just talk about, OK, how are we going to talk about goals and, and what's our schedule for talking about it, not specifically to talk about it. And what I'd like to do when we, when we do have our actual goals discussion is come back with completed projects because a lot of this work has been completed, so we'll go through and update this to what's been completed, what's in process, and what hasn't started yet. Um, well, I'd like to suggest that we do this soon. I agree. In perhaps the next meeting. Okay. And, and just to, so I... Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, what I... If, if this is what you're saying, that as a council, we would take the 2015 goals and go through them and say what's been completed, what's in process, what's, what needs to get continued to 2016. Is that what you were thinking? Yeah, I mean, I guess, I mean, things like the Complete the Bottleneck and Loop Project, mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's probably the only one that's actually complete. The rest of it is kind of in process. Um, so, yeah, I think I, th I, I agree it would be good. Um, since that's really the only completed one, I think it would be good to go through this and then, you know, decide do we want these, you know, are we going to keep these specific ones on um, the goals for 2016? What new ones do we want to add? Um, you know, how are we going to get citizen input onto those, into the goals? I also noticed, I, re I know that um, during the discussions around policing that there was a uh, comment uh, from Brian and Marianne that we would be discussing the mayor's court. So it seems like there's some goals that are not on here. Or pro mm -hmm. I don't know if you, it wasn't For an original goal, right. Right. but it's, it's mm -hmm. um, the, whole, the whole discussion, policing discussion isn't on here. So I assume maybe there's some, that and some other things that never ended up started out on the goals list but actually ended up being projects. Uh, right. So it might be good to include them as we're looking at, you know, things that we're pl are planning to continue into 2016. Mm -hmm. Right. And one thing we will mm -hmm. have to talk about fairly quickly is the levy because the primary is in March. Well, that's, that's something May, so. I was actually going to bring that up and mm -hmm. because really the only, the next thing to do is is a citizens committee. Correct. And I think, you know, two, two of us, Judith and I did it before. We just need two council members on a citizens committee, and I think that's kind of it for council, mm -hmm. as far as the levy is concerned. Um, How did the people on the committee end up on the committee? I'm forgetting. We just that. invited them. We invited them in. I mean, and we don't, we don't have a lot of time, you know, that because it's in it's in March. The the elections in March, so um, I think we're going to have to put together some educational materials. Um, uh, again, um, so um, that's actually something I was going to bring up tonight is um, who wanted to, who wanted to be part of that committee. I don't even know if that's something can is that something we can talk about at council? Who would be part of the citizen committee? Sure. Okay. Yeah, Melissa can de Melissa can develop some educational materials as far as this is what it would generate. This is what it would cost the owner of a. Hundred thousand dollar home. I have cetera, all the old ones in my office too. Okay. So, yeah, I've got all the old materials that we used from both campaigns. So, I remember there was some kind of a delineation, though, in terms of what's is it what staff could and couldn't do relative to the levy. Is we can only provide educational materials. Is that what it is? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what I was trying to remember. Okay, but we are talking about forming a citizen committee. I think we need to. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. So, I mean, I guess we want to put that out there tonight and and advertise it. I think, given the quick turnaround, there 
you know, certainly if people are interested, it would be great to come forward. I think that, that um, we'll probably look to maybe some of the people from the other, from the committees before mm -hmm. to see if there's interest in continuing um, or coming back. Um, because we really do have to put that together pretty quickly. Okay, and we can put something on the website about that. Is the, what we can put a we can put numbers of are you looking many, for and of, of members five or six seven maybe. And so, are, are Judith and Karen are gonna? Judith, are you interested, or do you? I know Marianne was on it too, I think, but you weren't on council yet. weren't you on the last levy committee? No. Oh, I thought you were. I'm happy to help. Okay. Unless somebody else is dying to do it. <laughs> and something that Patty just reminded me that we had talked about in agenda planning related that really goes back to, to, the, to the rules and procedures, something to think about um, is the possibility of starting meetings at 6.30 rather than 7.00. Um, let's think about that. Let's not do it for the next meeting. Let's have it as, as a discussion for the next meeting. Because we really, the, this, this past quarter, we've been doing it, um, the last quarter of the year, we did it almost every meeting was at 6.30. And it just, it seemed to go really well, I thought. Mm -hmm. It would just be something we would have to get out there to, right. to citizens because, um, and that was some of the confusion going back and forth between special meetings and, and work regular sessions. meetings and work sessions that was a little confusing. So let's add that to the discussion for rules and procedures. I'd like to go back to the goals. Sure, yeah. Um, because Karen, you brought up how to involve uh, citizens. So I'd like for us to talk a little bit right now, how do we want to involve citizens in setting 2016 goals and how do we want to involve each of us in doing that? Now, I think in the past, I seem to recall each council member maybe brought forth some things that they thought should be a goal, mm -hmm. which would could make sense and then talk about that. But in terms of involving citizens, I guess I would think we would advertise that this is a time for if citizens have uh, an interest in having goal, being involved in the goal discussion to come to whatever meeting that's going to be. Well, we, it usually goes over at least one to two meetings. So we would, you know, certainly invite citizens to all of those. Private input, obviously, you know, anytime, you know, citizens have something that they want to call about. Um, and then just, just coming to the meetings to talk about it. Um, as we're discussing, it seems to be the best way for that to happen. I mean, I think it's just having citizens understand that we are interested in taking and their input, and that's what, we're, that's what it's about. I think it just needs to be publicized. Right. Like, as in the paper, perhaps. Well, and I mean, I guess we did do, I think we were pretty active about uh, promoting it last time and did not really get any feedback. So Still. I don't know if there's something else that we can do um, to encourage that more, I'm not sure. Well, may maybe if we publish the goals that we have here as part of, you know, so people have a sense of, well, oh, these are, this is what we have been working on. Um, we're going to add some new things probably, remove some things. So. so because they might not be involved because they don't know really even what the goals are. Well, we mm -hmm. could, what we could do is put this under announcements on the website that council is working on developing oh, goals. Um, and we could link it to this document. Mm -hmm. um, and it could say, see current goals here. If you'd like to have input, council will be discussing it at the meeting scheduled for whatever. To, you know, if you want to do it at the next two meetings, we could say, you know, January 18th and whatever the first meeting in February is. And can we set up a, any, some kind of an email? They can email Judy directly for at info at, uh, and it goes directly to Judy. And so we could just say, if you would like to have input, you can attend the meetings. If you can't attend, you can email Judy and she will pass the information on to council. One thing I think is good is to link the, um, I know you've got the values up here, which are kind of these overarching uh, statements. Um, 
of kind of the values of the village and the goals presumably to some extent are linked to those um, yeah we used to have a place that we did said where you actually said which, which one yeah, off yeah. To the left there. but um, I was gonna say I mean personally you know when I ran for council I said what I thought was priority so I so that's so today preparing for this I was looking at my old you know my old leaflet and saying so what did I say uh, you know trying to uh, just refresh my memory that I didn't forget something I said I was going to try to do so um, but yeah I would think citizens coming to our meeting and being part of the discussion putting it up on the website sounds like a good idea yeah, I also saying is that yeah I do think that I, I did six. think that they were yeah, Judy thought that was on there, and apparently it's not. Where they were linked to a specific right because it used to, there used to be a column on there. Mm -hmm. I swear there was, yeah, because <laughs> you know some of them were multiple, mm -hmm. obviously. Right. Yeah, we might have just pared it down in the end. Um. Well, I, one idea that occurs to me is that you know we we have involved citizens on our commissions and. Maybe that's a way to try to kind of spread the word of mouth piece. Mm -hmm. um, because we did try a lot of different things last time and did not really engage folks. And, and again, maybe part of that was because they didn't know where to start. Um, but, you know, obviously we're interested in that feedback. So, I, you know, I wonder what other things we can do that are different. Well, are we asking for, um, have we asked our commissions for goals? I mean, that would be another another thing to do and um, you know that's why I'm thinking maybe we should put this off until the first meeting of February so that we all have an opportunity to go back to our commissions and get what their goals are um, something that's helpful too is council members and I know most most of the council members probably are doing this is that um, whatever they're thinking about goals that they write something up that's in the packet so that we can, we can see each other what we're thinking about and citizens can see it as well. Because I think that um, the thing about uh, goals to some extent is that it's kind of a looking forward uh, in a kind of longer way that you know citizens who aren't involved in the day-to-day -day activities of village government, it's probably a little hard to kind of, um, I don't know, maybe they're not you know taking that perspective so but I think the idea of looking to the commissions is also a, a good idea I, I my problem with looking at commissions is that I don't want to have a debate with the Commission when the Commission feels that they want to do this and I as a council member don't want to do that and now I've got a conflict with the Commission whereas my feeling is the commission supposedly works with council, not, not council working for the commission. And they, they may have some deadlines because they want something done that may not meet my deadline. So, you know, but uh, I'm welcome to take their input, but, you know, council still makes the decision. Right, I, I, mm -hmm. and I think, I think that Jerry, I think that's exactly what everybody else is thinking right. is that they each commission might have an idea of what specific projects they have on their plates and, and maybe goals for, for that. But then at the end of the day, council is going to make, make the list of the goals and rank them, um, I think, is my understanding anyway. Right. I mean, so. that's what I would think. You know, mm -hmm. what I'm thinking is maybe at the next meeting we bring our goals. If, you know, we start to flesh out our own personal goals have those in in the packet if we're able we go through this we'll be in the process probably all commissions won't have met by then but we'll be in the process of hearing from the commissions so we'll talk about it start the discussion at the next meeting there's though there will be something in the paper about it it will be on our website so people will start to know that we're having this discussion we certainly won't look to finalize it at the next meeting we'll have at least another at least one more discussion. So um, do you want me to put then under the announcements that um, it will be discussed at the meeting on February 1st and then a decision no, on the there, 15th? it will also or? be discussed the next time. It will be so discussed on the 18th. 1, 18, 2, 1, and 2, 15? I don't know about that. Maybe Just, set the... Yeah, 
I, I mean, I, I think I would just start with the first meeting. Okay. Get them engaged. And yeah, is, and, I'm sorry. Is the ranking a prioritization ranking? And how did the council, if it is, how did the council make that decision? Was it a? Um, it, it, it was prioritization. Um, and it was basically by sort of consensus. So, you know, we talked about, um, in particular, kind of a top five and then some others that followed that. That's what we did last year. Right, yeah, there is, I get you can kind of see that there are breaks in these two, in these two groupings. I don't know what the break between the second grouping and the third grouping was exactly. Um, I mean, part of it was recognition that we couldn't get, you know, that, that, our, that our goals had been a little too extensive um, and that we couldn't get it all done. And again, you know, I think we had major goals and then had the activities. I think probably that center section is probably a key one to be looking at because that's the activities to get us there, which um, tended to have been missed, I think, in previous goal settings. We basically talked about the, the final goal, the ultimate goal, but never really set up strategies for how we were going to get there. Uh, Diane, I wanted to ask you, is there something we could do online with the YS News that might uh, help people uh, give feedback? Help them become more aware? Maybe. I guess, and, and just engage them beyond just print. Okay. Because I know you guys have been really successful with getting feedback on other topics. So. Sure. Okay. So, any other discussion? Um, it is the plan for how we're moving forward with this sound reasonable? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a start, so let's just move forward with and see what we come up with. Okay. The, 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 I didn't catch what you said, Jerry. No, I said let's just move forward and see if oh, we okay. come, up, come up with it. The, the only move. question I have in terms of the ranking is, um, is, uh, is it like, uh, you know, this is my top one, this is my second, third, fourth, fifth, and then I guess my question is, you know, could a, if it's a top, if it's a top goal of say one council member, does that mean it ends up not being? Well, I mean, I, or how does that work? I think that last time one thing we said, see, there are nine goals here, but we yeah. said to really be effective, you have to have fewer goals. So I think the top, top the first five were like what mm -hmm. we all agreed with most mm -hmm. important. Mm -hmm. But if one council member has something that they really want to work on, mm -hmm. it may not end up being one of the top goals, but they're uh -huh. still quite able to work on. Okay. Yeah. And I think, I think um, if you look at these five, most of these five were very staff heavy. I mean, really work that staff was doing Versus where I think as we were going down the list, it was more about starting out discussions with commissions and things, and not that that doesn't involve staff, right. but it, it starts out at a different layer, a different level. Um, and I think that that's really where almost all of these last four were. Um, you know, the first one was with the energy board. Um, so mm -hmm. I think that that actually works pretty well. Yeah, yeah, this was energy board, environmental commission, CAP, and uh, uh, you know, Public pack and yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and are we done with that? Any other questions or comments? Um, and then um, the retreat. You know, it's early to be talking about the retreat. Typically, April. When is it typically, Judy? March, April. Yeah. Um, so again, we've had we've had a retreat every year that I can remember. Um, you know, just to get the thought process going. Um, you know, sooner rather we want to do it sooner rather than later. Um, you know, I think it's it's very different this year with with you, Judith, being you know a veteran. It's there's a lot there's much less 
getting getting a council member up to speed there's no getting a council member up to speed other than maybe some specific things we're we're dealing with so mm -hmm. you know i look at some of these a little differently than if we had new council members um but you know i guess so so i guess the question is do we want to do a retreat um what kind of a time frame are we talking about and um you know maybe we can start to to think about agenda items um that would be part of that retreat I think we should definitely have a retreat. Yes, I agree. Okay. I thought that was very productive last year. So let's, why don't we start, you know, as we're kind of bringing our goals ideas to the next meeting, let's bring some ideas for the retreat discussion. Okay. And one of, something too that's important is if you can weed through your calendar and look for what look like some open chunks of time, because I know that's a, a big piece of it is just a, arriving at a time that works or a couple of different options for dates for folks. Right. right. And I, I will say that mid-April was a bad time for me. Okay. So. Okay. Um, so are we ready to move on to the manager's report? Mm -hmm. yeah. The manager was on vacation and does not have a report. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Did you have fun on your vacation? <laughs> uh, you know what? I, I, I slept in a lot and uh, didn't do a whole lot of anything else. So, yeah, pretty pretty relaxing, actually. So. And you came, Cook, came and to I, work with a cold. And I, I, I think, yeah, I got a cold. And, it, and luckily it didn't start until late Saturday night. And so most of the vacation was, like, cold-free. <laughs> My turn? Melissa? Okay. There's a ton of stuff happening in the utilities um, or surrounding utilities. Um, the first thing that we've got going on is we're implementing a pay by phone system. A lot of uh, area communities use that where um, customers can call in 24 seven. They're only closed on two days out of the year and that is Thanksgiving and Christmas. So they can call 24 hours a day, seven days a week and they can pay over the phone um, with credit card with check um, and they can also get their real-time balances um, for their account. So they could call in, figure out what they owe if they aren't sure or don't have internet access because we also provide it via internet, but it's not real-time. Um, if somebody pays their bill today and they wanted to see what their balance was tomorrow to check if they made a partial payment, they can't do that online, but they would be able to do that through this phone system. Um, it's only $18 a month. So it's going to save a lot of staff time um, processing payments and such, and it's going to be a pretty big benefit to the customers because they can pay with a check over the phone. Right. We currently can't do that. And we will absorb that $18. $18 for the whole thing or $18 per customer? No, no it's be. for the whole thing. It was kind of shocking when I found out about it. It was actually Nathan Lee, um, one of our utility billing clerks, um, she's a resident of Xenia and she knew that they did it and she said I, I'd like to look into this and so she did and when she told me how much it cost I was shocked and I said yeah absolutely mm -hmm. so I mean 24 7 except for two days out of the year I think that's pretty great and they get the uh, real-time uh, balance updates there was um, a cost of integration with our software to be able to send and receive that information um, that was like twenty two hundred dollars but I, that's minimal in the grand scheme of things, um, and it's just the nature of our uh, utility billing software as well. Well, and it gives people the option of having it paying by check and therefore having it come out of your account and you're not having to use a credit card. So is it all automated? Mm hmm It's all automated, and after they set up their account the first time, it will recognize them coming from that phone number, kind of like, you know, Time Warner does. It knows that you're calling regarding this particular account at this particular address. So um, it will actually it will actually ask you if you just want to pay the same way that you paid the last time, and you can change it or you can you know you can speed up the process after that initial call and just pay the same method every single time. And security, it makes I guess I'm most credit a card concerned. Most credit card companies have this the same thing. Right, I know. Yeah, so they, where they store methods of payment. Right. So, so. Um, I, Everybody around us uses them. Uh, Xenia spoke very highly of them. That's a large community. So. Right. I, I know. I know. Yeah. It's so, just... thanks for doing that. Yeah, it's great. Uh -huh. I really appreciate the various steps you've been taking to make it. 
He's we're getting there. there. Yeah, Dot matrix true. printers went out the door, so we're good. <laughs> <laughs> that was a plus. That, that wow. was a big plus. Um, another thing that we are on the verge of starting is replacing all of the electric meters in town. Um, so that was approved by council. We did get a grant, um, a $40,000 BWC grant to help purchase the meters. At a recent meeting, council um, had supported us contracting with an outside company in order to facilitate the meter changeouts. We are almost to the point where we're ready to swap out that first meter. So that should be happening very, very soon. And we anticipate it's going to take three months. That's what we're telling everybody, just because we don't know what the weather's going to do. If, it, if the weather stays good as it has been, it could happen a heck of a lot quicker. But um, as of right now, we're just telling everybody three months. We put it on the utility bills this month on the message board. So that people know that we're going to have a company that's going to be coming around and changing out meters. And I think that we're going to send a letter. I know that uh, Johnny, the electric superintendent, had mentioned sending a letter to customers kind of targeting the areas where they're going to start um, because we don't exactly have that mapped out yet that I'm aware of. He, mm -hmm. he could be totally in the loop on that one. But um, we should be starting that very soon. But the exciting thing about that is we've gotten a lot of calls um, today actually about customers that are really confused about how to calculate their water bill because of the catch-ups and the estimations and the good thing about this is that once these electric meters are in place we're going to be able to read water every month so this notion of estimations and catch-up months and all of that will be totally resolved because we will have an actual read every month which helps with leak detection as well so um, I'm really, really excited about that because that's really confusing to customers with the estimations. So we will keep you all updated as that process uh, goes along. And another change that we had as of January 1st, um, we're going to start passing the credit card fees along to the customers um, that come to the window and uh, that call over the phone as well. Uh, those are going to be passed on. Uh, they average about 2.5% um, uh, of the amount that you're paying, the amount of your bill. And then uh, there's a transaction fee. It depends on whether you're coming to the window or you're using the phone service. It's either 30 or 50 cents each. It's 30 cents if you uh, do it at the window, which we're basically using the same online system that uh, customers can access from home to get their bill via email and pay at home. <coughs> Uh, it's 30 cents via that method. Um, in the phone system, it's going to be 50 cents for each customer. So there is still one other way that uh, credit card fees will be absorbed by the village, and that's if you mail your stub to the remittance address that is provided with the envelope in your mailed bill. It will go to the U.S. Bank lockbox in Cincinnati and uh, they will process them without the additional fees. So there is that So they one. don't charge, they're not charging the fees that way? No, they're, they're charging them to us still, and I have to reach out to our vice president at U.S. Bank to try to figure out how to pass that along to the customers. That's the only piece that I haven't figured out yet. So as of so, right yeah. now, that's, that's the workaround. I think that Vectran just charges a flat fee for credit cards. Yeah, some places charge a flat fee, but for most places it is a percentage of it. For most smaller municipalities, it is a percentage of whatever you're paying. Um, and it is 2% to 2.5% is the average. Mm -hmm. um, and I know um, when we implemented them in Williamsburg, it was 25 plus a transaction fee. Um, and that was immediately passed on to the customer. Here we've been absorbing them since we started taking the, the credit cards, and that actually is adding up to quite a chunk of change. It's about $600 a month that we've been paying to provide that service to customers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you pay by credit card, I mean, by check over the phone, there's no fee, right? No, no. Okay. Fee. So it's only with credit cards. I mean, there's a, I mean, there's a number of ways. I mean, check ACH will be an automatic debit every single month. I had somebody come up to the window today and say, I heard that there was a fee associated with that. There is not a fee associated with that. So right. we can take it automatically out of your bank account every single month on the fifteenth. Um, so there's there's a number of ways to pay that do not have fees associated with them. Right. The only thing I do want to caution folks is that if you if you're going to pay through your bank, 
and um, it's not going to be an automatic debit. You're, you're going to ask them to cut a physical check. Please make sure that you give time for the mail to get that check to the village so that you're not late. It can sometimes have... be delayed by 10 days. Yes. So if that's the way that you choose to go and, and you want to you go online and tell your bank to cut this check, make sure that you do it no later than the first of the month mm -hmm. to get here by the 15th. It's the only way for you to be positive that it's going to get here because it can take really quite a bit of time for that to happen. Mm -hmm. So. And then um, also as of January 1st with the changes um, in the utility policies, um, we will no longer be collecting deposits for utilities. So we have updated our application, which is online and all of our policies and procedures that um, were presented to council are, all, council are all online as well. So everything has been updated for the utility billing stuff. So that's all I got. Very good. Any comments or questions for Melissa? Great. Yeah, a lot of work been going on. Um, Judy? Not a lot to report except that I did have my clerk assistant resigned last month, so um, I am looking for a fabulous new eight to 10 hour a week person and the ads are going into the paper and and I'll put something out online. Have, so. have you had any luck with the intern yet? No, actually, I um, have not. Because I think they went back to class today, so you might want to try to get in touch with no, I was told, yes, you have an interested person, and yeah. but the coordinator needed to put us um, together and hasn't done that yet. So. Wright State University is going to provide us with an intern, and I thought it would be a good match for Judy since <laughs> the day that I got it was the day that her assistant uh, resigned. So, Okay. Um, let's talk about uh, future agenda items. Um, so we'll, let's see, resolution, we've, oh, the OWDA, is that what that is? The yes, but we cannot pass that resolution until I have a dollar amount to put in okay. to, to the uh, attachment. So okay. that's kind of just on hold. Okay. Um, what's the status of the Glen annexation? We are waiting on the legal description uh, and the paperwork. Passed the resolution authorizing the village manager to be the agent. Okay. And, you need and, and my understanding is the uh, description should be ready in uh, any day now. Okay. Um, so it could be the next meeting. It'll it'll be on our agenda when it's when it's ready. Good, uh, good chance for next meeting. Okay. Yeah, I'm actually meeting with Nick about something else on Friday, so I can ask him. Okay. Um, something else in your, when you're talking to your commissions about goals, remind them about their commission reports. Um, we'll start, Judy can start scheduling those. How does that happen, the scheduling? Just arbitrarily? Or I schedule them? Basically when they're ready. So I think uh, I, last year I pushed my commissions to do it earlier, um, but I think our, some of our last reports weren't until April. Mm. I, I usually schedule them and then Sometimes people say, wait, we're not ready. And so I moved it, move it, but we start with, here's when we'd like you to, okay. to present something, and then it, if it needs to move, it moves. Um, you folks need also the solar project resolution. Thank you. And I have an item to add also, an ordinance authorizing the transfers for the year that were included as part of the budget. An ordinance, you said? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, sidewalks. I'm going to be working on those. Um, that I'm going to take over that that project um, under the goals. Oh. Um, and I got the information yeah, that right. that you sent today, and I'll be working with Denise on that. Okay. Anything else? It's going to be a relatively light agenda, um, other than talking about the rules and goals. I think. The website and social media policy should be pulled out. It's it's not really about council rules and procedures. Okay. I mean, this so, is more about you know if we are going to have a well, we do have a Facebook page already. Mm -hmm. For the so we'll Facebook. have that as a separate discussion. Are you at the next meeting? I think yeah. I think okay. we need to address it soon. So website and social media policy is a separate discussion. Anything else? 
Okay. Um, I will entertain a motion to go into executive session for the purpose of discussion of an ongoing investigation. So moved. Second. Wintrow. Yes. Pausch. Yes. Sims. Yes. McQueen. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. 